In this video, I'm gonna be talking about necrotic enteritis in chickens. And stay tuned till the end because I'll be going through some treatment options for you and prevention of necrotic enteritis. All right, without further ado, let's get into it. So any of your chickens not looking well, are they experiencing diarrhea and not moving as much? It could be a symptom of this underlying condition. Necrotic enteritis in poultry is a controllable disease increasing in number, causing about $6 billion in loss worldwide in poultry production. A warning sign that your flock has this disease is a rise mortality rate. The best way to manage and avoid enteritis in chickens is to understand what it is, its causes, its signs and symptoms in the treatment. So let's first get into what it is. Enteritis in poultry is an enteric disease prominent among chickens, incredibly juvenile broilers. It is characterized by scars of necrotic tissue on the intestines lining. Necrotic enteritis in chickens is a severe illness that happens only briefly, which what most owners see as far as signs and symptoms are that their chickens have a significant drop in energy levels. Their depression can be followed by a sudden death. The disease is also multifactorial, which means there's also more than one cause for it to happen. One of the significant enteritis causes is anaerobic bacteria known as Clostridium perfringens. There are two primary types of Clostridium perfringens in chickens, types A and C. Toxins produced by this bacteria is what causes the damage to the intestinal wall and later impair digestion. Now let's keep going on this bar as what causes it. So this bacteria, Clostridium perfringens, badly affects the intestine cause liver lesions and obviously death when it starts to produce toxins. But there's one thing you need to know about this bacteria in chickens. They are already in the chicken's gut. They are a typical inhabitant in the intestines of a healthy chicken. Unfortunately, many factors in the chicken's upbringing trigger the bacteria to be dangerous, similar to that of staph infection in humans. So let's get into those different possible triggers. First one is diet with a high amount of protein. Please do not underestimate the composition of their feed. Enteritis diet is often induced with high protein primarily composed of animal byproducts. The second trigger is low immunity. One of the triggers is just overall their immune system and how healthy your bird is. So you need to make sure all your birds get the nutrients along with the supplements and vitamins that they need to fight off this. The third one is imbalanced or damaged gut health. Now, when the intestinal environment is favorable, this bacteria in chickens will not be bothering them at all or be dangerous. However, if the gut flora is disrupted too much with too much fat or other bacteria, it creates a detrimental space for this to start beginning to produce toxins. Another trigger is disruption to the intestinal mucosa. This refers to the internal lining of the intestine comprising microbes that fight off bacteria and aid in digestion. When the intestinal mucosa is damaged, it allows this bacteria to create an infection. Another trigger is high viscous diets. This kind of enteritis diet means high consumption of rye, barley, and wheat. When there is high intestinal viscosity, bacteria will thrive and later result in necrotic enteritis. Another one is contaminated water or feed. Once the chicken takes in contaminated water or feed, it has a high chance for bacterial growth and toxin production in the gut. Not only will this cause enteritis, but other illnesses related to contamination. The, another trigger is other diseases like coccidiosis. This is one of the enteritis causes and it carries bacteria that can trigger the disease. So control and preventing coccidia helps you avoid necrotic enteritis in chickens. The last trigger is stress. This usually refers to possibly when it gets really hot or a quick feed change or lack of space, you know, with like too many chickens and not enough room. Also biosecurity. So like making sure you've managed coccidiosis and other illnesses. And lastly, also the frequent attacks of a predator that can also stress the digestive system. Now let's get into how necrotic enteritis is transmitted. This usually happens when Clostridium perfringens produces toxins that damage the gut health. This bacteria is spread through dust, soil, litter, and feces. This bacteria is usually present in feces due to their pecking behavior. It's no surprise that these birds will easily take in this bacteria and spread throughout the flock. However, if you think about it, Clostridium perfringens is already inside the chicken's gut. There are just certain situations that trigger the bacteria to become dangerous. Now let's talk about those signs and symptoms and what to look out for. The enteritis signs and symptoms also depends on the severity. For mild cases, your chicken may experience a decrease in weight and increase in food conversion. For acute yet severe cases, death can occur within hours from the onset of the disease. You will see the chicken's reluctance or inability to move before they lose their lives. Mortality could be a significant and you could lose as much as 30% of the untreated flock. It's not precisely contagious, but if your community has acquired some kind of bacteria, they're most likely to develop necrotic enteritis. So some of the symptoms you would notice is diarrhea, dehydration, lack of appetite, intoxication, ruffled feathers, 
ataxia, which is abnormal or uncoordinated movements, reluctance or inability to move, dysbacteriosis of nutrient deficiency, and lastly, <laughs> loss of life. The only reason I bring that one in is maybe, you know, one of your chickens die or two, and you are starting to notice that it's like, quickly. So not to say that it's too late, it could be something that would kind of make you address what's going on. So your other chickens don't die. Now let's get into the treatment of necrotic enteritis. Main focus of the treatment is the predisposing factors. So medications are aggressively targeted to treat and mitigate this bacteria. Treatment of necrotic enteritis in poultry is often administered in their feeds or drinking water. Antibiotics have been proven to be effective, including oxytetracycline, Virginia myosin, bacitracin, lincomycin, and penicillins. The dosages of these antibiotics and the duration of how long they should be taking is for penicillin, this is 1.5 units per gallon for five days. Bacitration is 200 to 400 milligrams per gallon for five to seven days. And lincomycin, 64 milligrams per gallon for seven days. If you put it in their drinking water, make sure this is their only water source to guarantee the efficiency or efficacy of the treatment. You may keep up with the Medicaid water for three to five days during the in-feed medication for five to seven days. Now let's get into prevention. But before I get into that, please be sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel. Also subscribe to our website, thehappychickencoop.com. If you subscribe using the link in the description, you'll receive a free ebook on the 10 best egg laying chicken breeds. So as far as prevention goes, here are a few ways. Number one, antibiotics. You can add antibiotics in their feed or water. Some trusted medications are some of the ones I went through, bacitracin, lincomycin, and virginiamycin. You can also put penicillin since it's an effective prevention of necrotic enteritis. Just make sure to consult your vet about these. Second one is vaccinations. Reliable vaccine protects your chickens from necrotic enteritis and other related illnesses like coccidiosis and have your chickens checked and regularly vaccinated to ensure the efficacy. It would help if you administered the vaccination right away. Otherwise, it might cause a reaction to your birds that would still lead to enteritis. The third one is more natural one, the diet. One of the triggers of this is having too much fat or viscosity in their diet. So to prevent this, you should be more mindful about the feed you're giving your chickens. Avoid drastic enteritis diet changes and lessen the number of animal byproducts. Avoid too much wheat, barley, or rye in their diet. Instead, give your chickens high quality feeds and more vegetables. The other prevention method is probiotics. Having these live microbial supplements can help balance and maintain a healthy gut flora in your chickens. It also limits the production of bacteria and lessens the number of toxins. You can also administer exclusion cultures to add more of the good bacteria in their gut and inhibit the growth of the pathogenic ones. This also improves the immunity of your chickens. And the last prevention method is biosecurity. This just refers to methods like isolating infected birds and possible strains of clostridium perfringens from healthy birds. Once there's an infection in a chicken, have the infected ones separated from the flock for at least 14 days and observe strict measures to by using separate clothing and boots when handling your poultry. It's also ideal to designate an area for disinfection. If you like this video, be sure to check out this one over here. That's going to do it for us here at the Happy Chicken Coop. If you find our content interesting, if you learn something new, share the video with your friends, share the channel with your friends, subscribe to the channel. And with that, I hope you have a great day. We'll talk to you soon.